Hello, I'm Monique Bork with the Oregon Secretary of State's Office of Small Business Assistance. Today, I'm talking with Jamie Weddle Jones, Training, Compliance, and Operations Officer with the Secretary of State's Corporation Division. We're going to be discussing some of the important issues for you to consider about business entities in Oregon when you're selecting a structure for your new business. Thank you for coming, Jamie. So, Jamie, can you tell me something about what the different types of businesses are that you can have in Oregon? Yes, um, there are many different types of businesses in Oregon. Assume business names. They're commonly filed as sole proprietorships or general partnerships. We also have corporations, both business and professional. Nonprofits and limited liability companies, and that's just to name a few. We also have other business types that are not as common, like limited partnerships, limited liability partnerships, cooperatives, and business trusts. Assume business names, they have a fee of $50 and they renew every two years. The other types of business, excluding nonprofits, have a fee of $100 and renew yearly. And nonprofits, they also renew yearly but their fee is $50. And these fees are businesses are for businesses that report Oregon as their home jurisdiction. We also register businesses with home jurisdictions outside of Oregon and their fees are a little different. A couple different things to, to note, corporations have officers and shares, whereas limited liability companies report members or managers. And selecting the type of business is one of the very first things that you normally would do when starting a business. And it is best to research the different types to decide which one fits with your business needs the best. So what are some of the most common business entities registered in Oregon? The most common business types by far in Oregon are limited liability companies and assumed business names. They both list owners in their registry. The biggest difference between the two is the liability they carry. Limited liability companies, their owners have limited liability and a lot of that liability stays with the business. Whereas assumed business names, the owner carries all the liability for the business. So that means personal assets and everything are all included as far as the, what can be liable. Liability is one of the reasons that you want to do your research. If I were planning to provide a service, I might choose a business like a li limited liability company, it, just to limit some of the liability that I would have to take on and keep most of it with the business. I feel um, that would probably be something that I would, I would look at. Assumed business names, they don't have the same limits. And with assumed business names, the owner takes on all that liability. So a lot of times that's the their home, you know, any of their assets can be included if there was some sort of lawsuit or something that was against the business. So what are some of the obligations that go along with each of the entities that you've been talking about? So there are a lot of obligations that go along with the different entities. Um, limited liability companies, they have an operating agreement and the members who are known as the owners can appoint a manager or they can be member managed. Whereas corporations use bylaws as their guide. They have shareholders who are normally the owners and decisions are made by electing directors to oversee policies and appoint officers. Nonprofits have to may have to report to the Department of Justice and they have separate filing requirements um, as from our office. And then there's also all the tax requirements. So the Department of Revenue is a good resource for all of those types of requirements. Where can I find some more resources for deciding how to structure my business? The Business Information Center on our website at sos.oregon.gov forward slash business has a lot of great information when you are preparing to start a business. Once you select the green button for the Business Information Center, you will see a section with resources for all businesses. And my favorite starting place is the starting a business page. There you will find 
the most common steps to starting your business. And there is also a section for selecting your business name and structure. It is important to spend some time reading with, about choosing a legal structure. There is a table that makes it very easy to read and shows the differences in liability, taxation, and ownership. The Business Express and License Directory are also great resources, and the SBDC, the Small Business Development Centers, there's one in all different areas. Those are great resources to help when starting your business. I, I can't stress enough, though, how important it is to do your research. Um, making sure that you are getting the right start will put you on the best path to starting your business. Thank you, Jamie. This has been very informative. Thank you for having me.